So the next fly we're going to tie in the chronomid series. And again, this is a beginner tie. We're going to start with some beginner patterns. This one is for people that really don't like to put on the gills. A lot of times we use white antron for the gills. When you actually use a white bead like I'm going to use today, you don't need to put gills on it. Uh, there's no need for it because the, uh, the white bead is imitating the gills. So when you put a white bead on, you don't have to tie in the gills, which makes the pattern very easy. So I've got a uh, 3 32nd white bead. I'm actually going to use some ADOT black thread, of course, to tie with. I'm tying it on a size 16 2X long today. It's just I like to make it the, the, you know proportionally right with the bead. So as we're using a 3 32nd smaller bead, we're going to go with the, uh, with the smaller hook. So a size 16, again, 2X long, one of my favorites. I've got some of this uh, material we're going to use. It's uh, flashable. Essentially, it's a gunmetal gray flashable for the body. And again, we'll use some, some 0.2 millimeter you know, black wire. We want a defined rib, so I like the 0.2 millimeter again on this fly, since it is the only rib. So let's get going. We're just going to start a thread in behind the bead. And again, we're using that white bead, so we don't need the gills in there, which makes it very nice and easy to tie. And we'll take some of our wire. And again, these are beginner ties. And what I do with the wire, too, is I'll even put it in where the bead goes in to the eyelet and then I slowly progress back and I like to wrap it down the edge of the hook. See how I'm keeping the wire parallel to the hook and just pulling ever so slightly just to wrap in that. And I'll go about, you know, a third down the hook bend and bring my thread back up. And again, this is a smaller hook, so we, uh, we want a slightly tapered body and we can do that with the thread after or we can even do it with our flashaboo when we tie it in. Now I'll just grab a couple of strands, and again, just, just two. You don't need a whole lot of material for this. You know, a lot of people even use one strand to tie it, but I like to tie with a couple. So we'll just pick out a couple of strands of our flashaboo. And you know, I, again, there's so many different, uh, different colors of flashaboo. It's fantastic. It makes great bodies. You know, I've got, if you look at it, there's, <laughs> there's just a whole lot of whole lot of colors in there of different flashables that we're going to get into later when we start really getting to the tying and there's some great combination you can use along with thread colors and things like that. So I'm just going to wrap it back my thread probably about two-thirds of the way and just slowly tie in my flashable. And then wrap it back and again always pull your material slightly just to keep it nice and flush with your hook and then once you have it back there wrap it forward now you can do a little bit of a tapered body I've got this wax thread so it is a little bit bigger diameter so I'll form just a slightly tapered body on this fly now with the thread till I get up to the eye of the bead and then we're going to start wrapping and as you wrap again keep the back nice and thin chronomids are tapered and we just want this body to be nice and shiny underneath because we're going to put on that wrap black ribbon. Now this fly here is probably one of the most used flies we'll use. There's a lot of times when we, you know, when I'm talking to Brian or Dale and I'm just saying, you know, the shadow, we call it the shadow chronomid because it is so small and so fine. And some lakes, especially trophy lakes, you know, everybody says, oh, it's such a simple pattern. Yeah, it is a simple pattern. But when those fish are keying, especially big fish, are keying on small coronamids in those trophy lakes, this is my go-to pattern, believe it or not. I, you don't need wing buds. You don't need all those crazy things, double ribs. You know what? They love this because it's just so basic. And a lot of times they're just black and chrome. So what we're going to do is now take a few turns up. So I start one at the back, two. And again, I like about five or six, three, four, five, and six right up by the bead and then tie off there and again you can see it's it's just a it's a very 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 simple pattern quick tie and when you again remove your wire just just no pressure just rotate and it'll just break right off it's perfect and I also like just a small black thorax so what we're gonna do is just build up a little bit, bit of a black thorax there right behind the bead make it so you can see it's a nice taper on the fly it's got about you know five ribs throughout 
size 16 2x long not a big big fly just take a few few whip finishes just to hold it because we are going to coat it and pull on your thread just to cut it and that gives it a real nice finish so now what we're going to do is finish off with our clear coat now different clear coats you can use i've got you know the solaris clear coat in this one i've got a uv clear coat there's hard as nails you can use i've got that up here somewhere you can use head cement some people use super glues like gorilla glues and things like that also work good but i like this one because it is a uv coating and it does give it a little bit of a uv finish so we'll just make sure we we'll coat the fly and that bead acts as the gills you know that's why it's so nice for beginner tires to tie this pattern because they don't have to tie in the gills a lot of people get frustrated with tying in the gills with those white beads there's no need yeah, that that is what is imitating it and then i like to just smooth it around you know make sure you get that coating all over the fly you know on the back of the fly all through it and then once it's nice and even because you don't want blobs on there you don't want this uh you know blobbing at all this uh clear coat so make sure it's all nice and coated which it is and then i start hitting it in and you'll notice too a lot of beads that you'll buy some will really glow in the dark and some are more of a white bead i prefer you know if i'm fishing deeper water i really like the glow in the dark beads but if i'm fishing this fly like i normally do six to eight feet when they're really keying on these small shadow chronomids then i like more of the duller bead which i have on today but again it is a white bead and it does stand out quite nicely so i just coat that up and there it is the finished shadow chronomid now Again, this is a, a basic tie for people that want to get into chronomid fishing real quick and want to catch fish. This is a proven pattern. We've used this again on Trophy Lakes that has produced better than, you know, if you look at all these chronomids that I've got on the go, you know, you look at all these different chronies I have on the go here right now, this one is one of the best you're going to use in any lakes when you start. White bead, just that chrome body, black rib, it's a killer. So there's another one in the uh, beginner tire series and we got some more good ones coming up. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.